All of your life, you've been doing math with real numbers. So boring, isn't it? Well, it's time to start doing math with fake numbers. What, 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 do you, what does that even mean? Well, this is an example of a fake number, or as we'll call them, imaginary numbers. You know how all of your teachers have told you that you cannot take the square root of a negative number? Well, it's kind of true. Like, no, no, you can't. And the reason for that is because whenever you multiply the same number by itself, then you're going to always get a positive number. So like, for example, if I had 5 times 5, that's 25. But if I did negative 5 times negative 5, well, two negatives make a positive, that's still 25. So there's no way to multiply a number by itself and get a positive number. That is, until you enter the world of imaginary numbers. So basically, what is the square root of negative 1? Well, I mean, you can't do that, right? But the square root of negative 1 is going to be a new unit, and we're going to call it i. Now, the letter i always means the square root of negative 1. Always. It's not going to mean anything else. And the reason that we even have imaginary numbers, it might seem weird that we even have these if they don't exist. Well, when you're solving equations, you might come across imaginary numbers, numbers that don't exist. But you can combine imaginary numbers in some ways to actually get real numbers from them. So for example, what if we had i squared? What if we had i times i? Well, in that case, i is the square root of negative 1, right? So we're going to have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, if you're multiplying a square rooted number by itself, that actually cancels out the square roots, because that's like saying you have a square root and then you're squaring it. They cancel out. So you're just going to end up with negative 1. Now, what about i cubed? Well, i cubed is going to be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And we know that two square roots of negative 1 make negative 1. So we have negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So in this case, we're going to have negative 1 times i. And negative 1 times something just means the same thing as putting a negative sign on it. So we're going to have negative i. And finally, what is i to the fourth? Well, i to the fourth is, well, you know what it's going to be. Two square root of negative ones make negative 1. So we have negative 1 times negative 1. And negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. That means if you get i to the fourth, it just turns into 1. So it basically cancels itself out. So here's our first example problem. We need to figure out i to the 11th. Well, we don't want to write out 11 square roots of negative 1s, but there's actually a simpler way we can do this. And all we have to do is remember that i to the 4th means nothing. It just means 1. We can actually take i to the 4th out of this. Remember, this would be i times i times i times i, and then it's like 11 times. So we can split this up as i to the 4th times i to the 7th because we have 4 i's times 7 more i's. And we know that i to the 4th is equal to 1. So we're going to have 1 times i to the 7th. And anything times 1 is itself. So this 1 is doing absolutely nothing here. So we can just cross it out. And now we only have i to the 7th. So what is i to the 7th? Well, we can actually do the same thing here. We can split this up into i to the 4th times i to the 3rd. And again, i to the 4th is the same thing as 1, so it's doing absolutely nothing here, so we can cross it out. And now we just have i to the 3rd here. And if you don't quite remember what i to the 3rd was, we'll just work it out again. So remember that is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. And two square roots of negative 1 make negative 1, and then times, and then the square root of negative 1 is i. And negative 1 times i is just negative i. So in this case, i to the 11th is equal to negative i. So you can see how because we just keep taking out i to the 4th, you could have some ridiculous number here like i to the 583rd. And it would end up just being one of these simple answers like negative i or negative 1 or something like that. All right, here's another example. We need to figure out the square root of negative 36. Well, if you know your square numbers, you might be able to say, well, the square root of 36, like positive 36, that's 6, because 6 times 6 is 36. But we do have a negative sign here, and normally you can't take the square root of a negative number, but we have imaginary numbers. So to do this, you need to remember that if you multiply two numbers in square roots, then you just multiply them together and keep them in a square root. So we can actually split this up into the square root of negative 1, times the square root of 36. Because if you multiply these two numbers, you just multiply the inside, so it would be negative 36. And remember that the square root of negative 1 is i. And the square root of 36, well, that's 6. So we just have i times 6. And we'll treat i like a variable in this case. 
And when you have variables, it's just neater to put the number before the variable. So we'll put 6i. So there we go. Our final answer is 6i. That is the square root of negative 36. And we can do the same thing even for square roots that aren't nice perfect squares. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure out how to solve the square root of negative 20, and then unpause and see how you did. All right, so we're going to split this up just the same way as before. So we're going to do the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 20. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So we have i times the square root of 20. But the square root of 20 is not a nice perfect square. But we can actually use the same method to pull out a perfect square from this. So if you know your perfect squares, we have 4 because that's 2 times 2. We have 9 because that's 3 times 3, and so on. So we can actually divide 4 out of this. So if we were to do i times, and then we're going to split this up into 4 and some other number. And if you weren't sure what other number we would use, then you could put it in your calculator. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So we can split this up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So we have i times, and then the square root of 4 is 2. And then we just have the square root of 5, which we can't simplify. So to keep this neater, we'll put the number before the letter, and then we'll put the square root at the end just to make everything neater. But you don't necessarily have to do that. So there you go. This is our final answer. The square root of negative 20 is 2i times the square root of 5. All right, here's another example. We need to multiply these two imaginary numbers. And you might not be sure how to do this, but you can actually do it just with the information we've been talking about before. So go ahead and pause the video, try to see if you can do it yourself, and then unpause and see if you got it right. All right, so you might realize that these are all being multiplied because if you have a letter next to a number, that means multiplication. So these are all being multiplied, and in this case, it doesn't matter what order we do this in. So we can multiply the numbers together, and we can multiply the i's together. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, and then we have i times i, which is i squared. And if you remember from before, i squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 which is negative 1. So i squared is negative 1, so we're going to put negative 1. And now we have negative 12 times negative 1. Well, 12 times 1 is 12, because anything times 1 is itself. And we have two negatives, and two negatives make a positive. So in this case, our final answer is 12. Negative 4i times 3i is 12. All right, here's one more example. We need to multiply two square roots with negative numbers in them. So I'll give you a chance to go ahead and pause the video and try to solve it yourself, and then unpause and see how you did. All right, so this is a weird math thing. You, you might think to yourself, because we've been talking about how if you have two square roots, you can multiply them and get what's inside. So you might think that, okay, well, we'll do negative 5 times negative 10. 5 times 10 is 50, and two negatives make a positive. So we'll have the square root of 50, and we're done. But actually, you can't do that. When you have two square roots with negatives in both of them, you actually can't multiply them together, which may seem weird, but I'll, I'll show you why that is. So we're going to go ahead and turn these into i's. So remember that this can be split up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 5. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So we have i times the square root of 5, which is just i times the square root of 5. And then we can do the same thing for this. It's going to be the same thing. We're going to have i times the square root of 10. So now we can multiply the numbers together and the i's together. So we're going to have the square root of 5 times the square root of 10. That's the square root of 50. And we have i times i, which is i squared. But remember from before that i squared is actually negative 1. So we're going to have the square root of 50, which is what we thought we had before, but times negative 1. So this is actually going to be negative the square root of 50. So yeah, imaginary numbers have weird rules like that, but just remember to try to split it up into i's and see if it gives you the right answer. So in this case, our final answer is negative the square root of 50. So there you go. You now know how to do imaginary numbers, which don't exist at all, but you still have to do math with them. Yay. But you might be excited now because now you know how to do real numbers and you know how to do fake numbers, imaginary numbers. So yay, we're done, right? No, because it turns out there's a third kind of number, and you might think, well, there's real and not real. Well, how can there be another number? Well, there are numbers that are part real and part fake, and they're called complex numbers. So if you want to learn how to use complex numbers, then you can watch this video right here. 
And as always, if you have any questions about this video, go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to answer your question. Thanks for watching.